Here's a solution to one of the problems from chapter 14. This is an analysis of variance problem where you need to use technology. Um, for, uh, for this, the technology can be um, either StatCrunch or the TI calculator. Uh, Excel will actually do it as well, but, um, but you probably, I don't think the Macintosh version of, of um, Excel has the data analysis features, but you definitely, if you're going to use Excel, you definitely will need to Google how to do analysis of variance in Excel to get the instructions because it's some it's a little bit of setup involved to do it. Anyway, but you'll definitely need some sort of technology um, or want to use some kind of technology to do this. So they're giving us the data um, and then they're giving us some information and it might be a little confusing because they're they're giving us some stuff and they're asking us to do other things where we would actually need to use the calculator. Um, I open the table, this is the, the link for the table is here so I open the table and this is what shows up. Um, the important thing here is that this is the data. So this is the actual data. So if you would like to um, get these first results for yourself, remember we put this into L1 in our calculator, this into L2 in the calculator, and this into L3. So um, we put that in with, um, oops, On your calculator, if you do stat and then edit, you'll be able to edit your L1, L2, and L3 lists. So there's not a lot of data here. There's only three things in L1, two things in L2, and three things in L3. So down here, it's telling us the mean and standard deviation of these lists. Since there's not very much data, that's not very exciting. Um, and I'll tell you in a second how you could find those yourself if you wanted to. The... Um, in this first part, they're just asking us to type that in. So they're telling us this is 5, and this is 2, and this is 3.5, and this is 2.12. So all they're asking here is to open this up and, and actually type these in. But, um, but if I wanted to find those, for example, like say I want to find uh, these numbers for, um, for group 2, um, remember we can do, I keep doing that, we can do stat calc. And the first option is called, uh, let me get it right, one var stats. And so um, if I do that and then I type uh, L2 after it, so after I hit enter on one var stats, it'll just sit there kind of as waiting for me to do something. If I choose L2, which is the blue button above the number 2 on your calculator, and hit enter, then you'll see the summary statistics for this group. And so you'll see the mean is 3.5 and the standard deviation is 2.12. So the, uh, the reason that's significant is because what we're about to do, and obviously all this stuff for A and B is just copying these numbers over, um, but what it asks us to do in C is to change one of the observations. And so it's saying change this 5 to a 3. So if you have this in your calculator already, then all you have to do is go back into stat edit right, stat edit, and go down and change the 5 to a 3 and redo it. Um, that can only change the second group information as far as the mean and standard deviation goes. So if you want to see how that changes those guys, you can do stat calc and one bar stats L2, and it'll show you this new thing. Um, the, new, um, the new mean, obviously, is just 2.5. You can see that that's what's going to happen. And, um, and the standard deviation will get smaller because there's less difference between these two. There's less variation between these two. Um, and so that's probably enough to know. And then if you redo ANOVA, what they're actually asking you for in CAD is to, is to run the ANOVA test yourself. And so again, you can do this by pulling the menus down in StatCrunch, if that's where you've edited them. Or you can just use a calculator and say analysis of variance, L1, L2, L3. Um, and it will spit out um, this information for you, either one, either either the Stat Crunch or this, or Excel, if you want to um, figure out how to load that into your computer. Um, we'll give you this output again, but with the new data set. Now, what should happen, if you think about what these things mean, um, when this number changes to 2.5, that means that these three means are actually more varied. Right, 2.5 is further away from 5 and 8. So that's going to increase the variability of these means across the, across the means. 
That is what this number is measuring, this group variability, this 13.5. Um, and so since this is now going to be have more variability in these means, then this number is going to go up. This ms for the group is going to go up. So what you should see is that number getting bigger. Um, and I did it, but of course I calculated to sleep now. Hang on. Right, so when I do this with the edited data, this number um, gets bigger. It goes up to 18.75 because this is the number that is measuring the, the variability between these group means. And if the 3.5 changes to 2.5, then these are more spread out. And so I should have a, a higher number there. Um, on the other hand, uh, the variability within this group got smaller. The standard deviation number went down. So the variability within this group got smaller, and the variability within these groups didn't change. So the second number here measures the variability within the groups. And so our expectation is that that gets smaller. And if I can scroll down my calculator, that is what happens after you've edited the data. This goes from 5.3 down to 4.5. So if you think about it, remember this F test statistic, F is the um, MS for the groups. I guess I'll write it the way I wrote it on the slides. It's, I think group and error is weird, but it's the, um, this is called the mean squares. Um, so it's a measure of the variability between the groups divided by the variability within the groups. This is what's supposed to be happening. And so that number comes from the MS number for the groups over the MS number for, uh, for within the groups, what they're calling error there. Um, if you think about the way fractions work, if uh, this fraction has a bigger numerator and a smaller denominator than my original fraction, so my original F was 2.55, I've replaced the numerator with something bigger, and I replaced the denominator with something smaller, so the new f is going to be bigger than that. And, of course, it's on my calculator, so I don't have to be, uh, be cryptic about it. Um, so the new f here is going to be 4.17, if I read it off the calculator. And, um, and we know that because of the way the, these distributions are shaped, both the F distribution and the chi-square distribution only have one tail. They just go out like that. And so uh, 4.17. So the p-value, there's only the tails are only ever out to the right. The p-value is this area. That's what part D is going to be, is the p-value. So the new p-value ought to be smaller than this p-value because before our line was at 2.55 and shaded, so that gave us a certain amount of area. If I move that line out to 4.17 and shade it, that should be a smaller value. And sure enough, on my calculator, it says the p-value is uh, 0.09, rounded to, uh, to the nearest hundredth. Um, so all of this stuff that I'm telling you about how these numbers change, that's not really relevant to the problem. Uh, all that you really have to do, I mean, it's relevant, but it's not something you have to do. All you really have to do is, um, is be able to run this using some kind of technology so that you can make this change. So that you can take the data that they gave you and change the 5 to a 3 and then just rerun the analysis of variance test. And what you'll see is a lot of these numbers will, will be the same and some of them will change, but the way they change should be um, consistent with the way that we understand how the F test is to work. So I've told you way more than you need to know. Uh, but all they're asking you to do is, in the data, change the 5 to a 3 and then run ANOVA. Um, so, again, you can run this on the calculator. That's what this is all referring to. Um, you can put these four, I mean, sorry, these three columns into StatCrunch and choose ANOVA from the stat menu. Um, uh, or you can uh, Google um, doing ANOVA in Excel, whatever version of Excel you have. But I should warn you that that really will only work on a Windows computer. All right, so you have several options for, for doing the analysis of variance test, and, and uh, the only thing this is asking you to do is, is put the results of that into this 